If you want to live an amazing life, a truly abundant and joyful life, make a conscious decision today to live and be present in this moment. You don't need unlimited financial wealth or a projected version of success or approval from other people. You don't need a certain job acceptance or a certificate or to be a certain weight, size or colour. All you need is now. A lot of our unhappiness is formed when we lose focus of where we are right now in the present. We get so caught up reminiscing of past events or projecting into future events that we lose the the magic in these moments. So much so that we overlook where we are, the present, the gifts right here, right now. We live in a world of numbers. Whether counting followers, likes, dollars or pounds, these are all fluctuating currencies and there is no stability in fluctuation. And if we're completely honest, at the end of our lives, a lot of these numbers won't mean much to us. Staying with numbers for a moment, did you know that we breathe approximately 20,000 breaths per day? And over a 50 year lifespan, that's 400 million breaths. But how many of them are you aware of? Your heart. Your heart beats approximately 100,000 times per day. That's 35 million beats per year and 2.5 billion in your lifetime. But how many of these beats are you aware of? such fundamental mechanisms to our existence, but something we can often take for granted. Sometimes we live very mindlessly. We live with the assumption that there will be air tomorrow, or that our heart will just continue to do its job whether we notice it or not. But something magical happens when you pay attention to your breathing and your heart. You become very aware and grateful and in tune with the fact that you are alive. But at times we all fall victim to the rat race of life. Everything around us seems to be moving fast and we can't just stop and pause and be and really experience our moments without thinking about the past or thinking about the future. And a great example that comes to mind is, you know, when you're at an event and something's about to happen and we pull out our phone or our camera to record that moment. And what happens is we're so focused on capturing the moment for a later date, for a future watching party or for a future memory that we fail to actually experience the moment because we're focusing on the technology of capturing the moment. But this is personal. Do you want to experience the moment or capture it? Have you ever found yourself in a place, maybe at an event or surrounded by people, your body is there, but your mind is elsewhere? Yeah, me too. It happens. We're thinking of the next step before we've completed our current step. And sometimes we limit our current step based on our prior experiences. We have these three time zones, the past, the present and the future. And too often we live on the two that actually don't exist, the past and the future. And we really take away the control that comes from living in the present. It's important to know that while we speak about living in the moment and being here now, it's not about denying your past or denying your hopes and dreams for the future. These time zones are very real to you and a big part of who you are as a human and what you've experienced and what makes up your life today. It's about realizing that you are the moment right now and being still enough to appreciate that without taking anything away from that. I'd like to first touch on the past. The past is memories, both good and bad. It's often the case with memories, there comes feelings attached to them. And what happens when we bring the past into the present is we experience those feelings at a time where we can do nothing about them. And this takes away our control. And when we don't feel controlled, we can get depressed, we can get sad, we can get angry and frustrated. Memories of the past are not the bad thing, it's the emotional response to the past that when we bring it into our present, we often feel powerless, useless and helpless. The future on the other hand has a very similar component to it in that we often 
project a certain type of lifestyle that we want to have. And in many cases, it's linked to our past, maybe not wanting to go back to a place that we've been and our goals are the total opposite of our former life. Or maybe it's trying to get back to a certain level of success or a certain vision of your life that you feel would be better for you, you feel that would make you happy, you feel that would make you complete. The problem with the future is it's also a time zone that we cannot control. Our future is uncertain and so with that comes anxiety. We tend to worry about our next move. Am I making the right decision? Am I going down the right path? Am I hitting milestones in my life quick enough? And so we focus on the future. We're worrying about the outcome. And again, it's a time zone that we cannot control. We have this tendency to think of a future being better than what we have right now or what we've experienced before, thinking that we will appreciate life when we get to this point. But when we get to that point, it's now a present moment that we're overlooking for another future moment. And so we never arrive. There are three things I want you to realize today when it comes to living in the moment. Number one is you already are living in the moment. It's always present and it's always now. Number two is there's nothing wrong with you remembering your past or hoping for a future. And number three is impermanence. Recognize and accept that every moment is temporary. Like I said there in step one, it's always the present and we're always here right now. The problem comes when we're not always conscious of our present state, conscious of where we are and we drift from time zone to time zone. I have four tips that I'd like to share with you today that will help you to be more present and live in the moment consciously. Number one is attention to detail. This is something that for a very long time, a habit of mine is to really pay attention to where I am. So if I go out or I'm at an event, I'm always looking at every detail of the venue. I'm looking at the flooring, the carpet, the walls, the, the decor, the types of people who are in the room, sometimes the kind of conversations that I can overhear. And I pay attention to as much as possible so that I can reflect on that event, actually really knowing that I was there. I was aware of my surroundings. I wasn't just a floating person just there. I, I won't be able to take in every detail but I will create and paint such a picture that it will leave memories with me beyond the experience without it having to be photographed or recorded on my phone. My mind is embracing and being very present in that experience. So attention to detail, pay attention to your surroundings, not just at an event, but just in your current space. Pay attention to your breathing. Make it a real habit to be thankful for your breath day to day, moment to moment. Give yourself a real comfortable space to pay attention to your heartbeat. In moments of stress, I tend to just put my hand over my chest and feel my heart. I recommend you try it. It's very hard to focus on other things when you're trying to find your pulse because you want to be as still as possible so you can feel it. You don't want to be distracted. And, and the same thing happens with your breathing. When you start to really pay attention to your breathing, it's hard for you to focus on anything else because you're so laser focused in what's happening, what your body is doing, your inhale and your exhale, but also it takes concentration and concentration is the key to being present. Just having that moment where you can silence the world so you can be aware of the sensations around you. So speaking of sensations, some of those details may be things that you can feel. I've read a lot about great practices where people carry things with them, whether they be stones or um, a piece of wood or a fork or something where they can feel it, when something familiar. So when they step into unfamiliar circumstances that bring anxiety or worry, if they can feel that thing they have with them, it brings them comfort just to kind of ground them and bring them back to a place of somewhere where they're comfortable. I think that's a great technique to use if you are someone who's affected by anxiety, just having something familiar that can remind you 
that the thing that you're worrying about can be extinguished somewhat if you can be present enough to feel something that you're familiar with and something that brings comfort. The second tip I'd like to share with you today is self-acceptance. This one is so important, but the first thing to realize with this is to surrender to the fact that at different stages of your life, there will be different levels of you, but you are only responsible for the level that you're on right now in this moment. Sometimes we get so carried away with who we think we should be that we don't accept who we are right now. And so if we spend more time getting to know the person we are right now, building a relationship with ourselves right now, then we will be more likely to accept who we are as opposed to reject who we are for a future version of ourselves that, if I can put it quite bluntly, isn't promised. My third tip is journaling. This is something that I've done for many, many years, whether it's on a device or written down or on a laptop. I've written a lot of notes over the years. A lot of these notes have ended up in books. But one of the benefits of journaling is you can separate each day. And so your life doesn't feel as though it's one long day. We notice that the year seems to be flying and time seems to be going faster and faster. And it's getting harder for us to recount what we did on certain days. And that is really because there is no record of it. It's a beautiful thing to be able to break up your days and to not feel as though your life is one long day, but also just to be present enough to put down your reflections, your goals for the day, see if you achieved your goals, analyze what didn't I do so well? What did I do great? What can I do better for the next day? But in that moment, giving yourself a real honest and pure assessment of your moment. And it's a beautiful thing to be able to look at your journal and say, wow, I did this on that day. That was a great Tuesday. It stays in its Tuesday. It doesn't carry over into your Wednesday. And that's a beautiful thing. Often what happens when we don't journal, we don't write notes is our life becomes a bank of information and experiences that drag into the next day and it doesn't have a correct filing system. And so often the pains of yesterday can often feel as though they have happened today and the next day. And with the pace that life is happening and coming at us, we can just be living the experiences of several past events and past days and moments every single day and that's not a very good place to live so journaling and reflecting is a great place to start my final tip and probably my most important i don't know what faith you are what your beliefs are but i can speak from me personally prayer and meditation has always helped me to be more present prayer is great because you're focusing on something bigger than you prayer it gives you a time to just surrender everything in the world surrender all the distractions it's a really focused time between you and God whether it's you being thankful for your day or asking for something or repenting of something it's you being conscious enough in that moment to identify your needs and sometimes we're so busy we don't know what our needs are we don't acknowledge what we've done wrong and we don't know what we want because we're so busy in those other two time zones. So prayer is great for that. Meditation is also great because it gives you a space to just be and you can observe your thoughts floating from left to right and not judge them. But because you're consciously taking that time out of your day to be the observer of you, you are automatically in a space where you're welcoming the present. And it's such a great tool to practice because you start to build habits. A lot of my teachings and writings are all about habits. We learn things through nature. We learn things through nurture. We learn things through experiences. We learn things through the models that other people set for us. And sometimes the things that we learn and the habits that we build are not what's right for us. And so, a lot of it is unlearning by creating new patterns, new behaviors, new habits. And so these four tips I've shared with you today, attention to detail, self-awareness, journaling, prayer and meditation, 
it's a great way to start building new habits. Just remember not to be too hard on yourself. Remember that it's a process and that you are already in the present. It's just about being more conscious of your moment. I'm going to end this one here as this is literally a topic that I can speak about forever, but I want you to stay engaged and present in this moment. And so if you like what you hear, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, stay blessed and I wish you better days.